Welcome to Paper Reading 2A. The paper we're reading is DART, Differentiable Architecture Search by Han Zhao Lu, Karen Simoyan, and Yiming Yang. Abstract. This paper addresses the scalability challenge of architecture search by formulating the task in a differentiable manner. Unlike conventional approaches of applying evolution or reinforcement learning over a discrete and non-differentiable search space, our method is based on the continuous relaxation of the architecture representation, allowing efficient search of the architecture using gradient descent. Extensive, extensive experiments on CIFAR-10, ImageNet, Pentree Bank, and Wikitext 2 show that the algorithm excels in discovering high-performance convolutional architectures for image classification and recurrent architectures for language modeling, while being orders of magnitude faster than state-of-the-art non-differentiable techniques. Our implementation has been great. Our implementation has been made publicly available to facilitate further research on efficient architecture search algorithms. One introduction. Discovering state-of-the-art neural network architectures requires substantial effort of human experts. Recently, there has been a growing interest in developing algorithmic solutions to automate the manual process of architecture design. The automatically search architectures have achieved highly competitive performance in tasks such as image classification and object detection. The best existing architecture search algorithms are computationally demanding despite their remarkable performance. For example, obtaining state-of-the-art architecture for CIFAR-10 and ImageNet requires 2,000 GPU days of reinforcement learning or 3,150 GPU days of evolution. Several approaches for speeding up have been proposed, such as imposing a particular structure of the search space, weights or performance prediction for each individual architecture, and weight sharing inheritance ac across multiple architectures. But the fundamental challenge of scalability remains. An inherent cause of inefficiency for the dominant approach is example based on RL evolution MCTS, Monte Carlo tree search, SMBO, or Bayesian optimization is the fact that the architecture search is treated as a black box, opti black box optimization problem over a discrete domain, which leads to a large number of, of architecture evaluations required. In this work, we approach the problem from a different angle and propose a method for efficient architecture search called DARTS, Differentiable Architecture Search. Instead of searching over a discrete set of candidate architectures, we relax the search space to be continuous so that the architecture can be optimized with respect to its validation set performance by gradient descent. The data efficiency of a gradient-based optimization as opposed to the inefficient black box search allows DARTS to achieve competitive performance with the state of the art using orders of magnitude less computational resources. It also outperforms other recent efficient architecture search method, ENAS. Notably, DARTS is simpler than many existing approaches as it does not involve controllers, hypernetworks, or performance predictors, yet it is generic enough to, uh, to handle both convolutional and recurrent architectures. The idea of searching architectures within a continuous domain is not new, but there are several major distinctions. While prior works seek to fine-tune a specific aspect of an architecture, such as filter shapes or branching patterns in a convolutional network, DARTS is able to learn high-performance architecture building blocks with complex graph topologies within a rich search space. Moreover, DARTS is not restricted to any specific architecture family and is applicable to both convolutional and recurrent networks. In our experiments, section three, we show that DARTS is able to design a convolutional cell that achieves 2.76 plus minus 0 0.9 test error on CIFAR-10 for image classification using 3.3 million parameters, which is competitive with the state-of-the-art result by regular, regularized evolution. 
obtain using three orders of magnitude more computational resources. The same convolutional cell also achieves 26.7 top 1 error when transferred to ImageNet mobile setting, which is compared to the comparable to the best RL method. On the language modeling task, DARTS efficiently discovers a recurrent cell that achieves 55.7 tests perplexity on Pentrebank PTB, outperforming both extensively tuned LSTM and all existing automatically searched cells based on NAS and ENAS. Our contributions can be summarized as follows. We introduced a novel algorithm for differentiable network architecture search based on bi-level optimization, which is applicable to both convolutional and recurrent architectures. Through extensive experiments on image classification and language modeling tasks, we show that gradient-based architecture search achieves highly competitive results on CIFAR-10 and outperforms the state-of-the-art on PTB. This is a very interesting result consider considering that so far the best architecture methods use non-differentiable search techniques, example based on RL or evolution. We achieve remarkable efficiency improvement, reducing the cost of architecture discovery to a few GPU days, which we attribute to the use of gradient-based optimization as opposed to non-differentiable search techniques. We show, we show that the architectures learned by DARTS on CIFAR-10 and PTB are transferable to ImageNet and Wikitext 2, respectively. The implementation of DARTS is available at github.com quark0 slash DARTS. 2. Differentiable Architecture Search We describe our search space in general in section 2.1 where the computation procedure for an architecture or a cell in it is represented as a directic cyclic graph. Okay, we then introduce a simple continuous relaxation scheme for our search space, which leads to a differentiable learning objective for the joint optimization of the architecture and its weights. Okay, finally, we propose an approximation technique to make the algorithmic algorithm computationally feasible and efficient. Okay, so let's look at the search space. Following this paper, uh, we search for a computation cell as the building block of the final architecture. The learned cell could either be stacked to form a convolutional network or recursively connected to form a recurrent network. Okay, so we look for computation cells. A cell is a directed acyclic graph consisting of an ordered sequence of n nodes. Each node Xi is a latent representation. Example: a feature map in a convolutional net in, in uh, example a feature map in convolutional networks, and each directed edge Ij is associated with some operation Oij that transforms Xi. We assume the cell to have two input nodes and a single output node. For convolutional cells, the input nodes are defined as the cell outputs in the previous two layers. For recurrent cells, they are defined as the input at each current step and the state carried from the previous step. The output of the cell is obtained by applying a reduction operation, example, a concatenation of all the intermediate nodes. Each intermediate node is computed based on all of its predecessors. So xj is the sum of all i less than or equal to j with some operation applied to it and then the xi. So, yep, so 3 can depend on 0, 1, 2, all of these. A special z 0 operation is also included to indicate the lack of connection between two nodes. The task of learning the cell therefore reduces to learning the operation on its edges. 2.2 2. Continuous Relaxation and Optimization. Let O be the set of candidate operations. Example convolution, max pooling, 0 where each operation represents some function O to be applied to Xi. So O is just the set of can candidate operations. To make the search space continuous, we relax the categorical choice of a particular operation to a softmax over all possible operations. So yeah, to make the discrete into a continuous, use the usual softmax. Okay, so O bar ij of x 
Okay, so OIJ probably means um, uh, I to the Jth. Um, yeah, from from I to J. So this is I, this is J. So the operation from I to J. Okay. Um, uh, and O bar. Um, okay. It's some number, O bar. Sum over all operations in O, and then exponential of alpha zero i j. So what is alpha? Where the operation mixing weights for pairs of node i and j, so we have nodes i and j, and this is the operation between them, are parameterized by a vector alpha i j of dimension the size of O. Um, so there's a vector i of j and this vector probably has is the size of O so it probably has the um, some number. Okay the mixing weights the weight for each operation here. So alpha i j is a vector of weights and we so this O is probably an index into the vector. Um, So it's indexed into the vector, so we have some weights. And then we take the softmax off it, and then we sum it over all the operations that are possible in for it. And uh, what is O of x? Anyway, OK. The task of architecture search then reduces to learning a set of continuous variables alpha which is equal to alpha ij as illustrated in figure one so we've turned this discrete in, discrete problem into a continuous one by using uh, softmax and what we're trying to do is alpha and alpha is the vector of uh, mixing weights okay let's look at figure one figure one is here Figure 1, an overview of darts. A, operations on the edges are initially unknown. So right here, all these operations are unknown. B, continuous relaxation of the search space by placing a mixture of candidate operations on each edge. So there's each edge. So each of these are um, alphas, alpha 0 to 3, alpha 0 to 2, alpha 0 to 1, alpha 1 to 3. It has weights for each, all of these um, operations so I'm assuming there's three operations here red green and blue operations okay part C joint optimization of the mixing probabilities and the networks weights by solving by by level optimization problem okay so I'll, we'll probably get to that inducing the final architecture from the learned mixing probabilities okay Illustrating figure one. At the end of the search, a discrete architecture can be obtained by replacing each mixed operation, OIJ, with the most likely operation. OIJ equals argmax, the operation with the highest value in the vector. So we just do the argmax of the vector, and then we just get the architecture from it. In the following, we refer to alpha as the encoding of the architecture. So alpha is the encoding of the architecture. Ij gives us the vector for each two pairs. And I assume alpha is for all pairs of i and j. OK. After relaxation, our goal is to jointly learn the architecture alpha and the weights w within all mixed operations example the weight of the convolution filters analogous to architecture search using rl reinforcement learning or evolution where the validation set performance is treated as reward or fitness darts aims to optimize the validation loss but using gradient descent okay makes sense denote by l train and l val the training and the the training and the validation loss so l train is the loss training loss 
LVAL is the validation loss. Both losses are determined not only by the architecture alpha, but also by the weights of the network. Okay, The goal for architecture search is to find alpha star that minimizes the validation loss. LVAL, W star, alpha star, where the weights W star associated with the architecture are optimized by minimizing the, minimizing the trading loss. W star equals argmin over all weights over the training loss on this uh, given this fixed architecture find the weights that minimize the training loss so we get the weights for minimizing the training loss and then um, the validation loss is the um, um, yeah and we the validation loss is to find the architecture and um, the training loss is to find the weights so there's two things to optimize. So this implies a bi-level optimization problem with alpha as the upper level variable and W as the lower level, level variable. So we minimize alpha on the validation set over the best weights given the alpha such that, oh, such that W star alpha is the best weight from the from the trading so loss trading loss of w and alpha first we find the best weights then we find the best architecture um, among all the architectures with the best weight the nested formulation also arises in gradient based gradient based hyperparameter optimization which is related in the sense that the architecture alpha could be viewed as a special type of hyperparameter although its dimension is substantially higher than scalar-valued hyperparameters, such as the learning rate, and it is harder to optimize. Okay. 2.3, approximate architecture gradient. Evaluating the architecture gradient exactly can be prohibitive due to the expense of inner optimization. We therefore propose a single approximation scheme as follows. So the gradient of alpha of the validation loss with the optimal weight and the given alpha is approximately equal to the validation with some weight minus z gradient of the training loss um, with the given weight and the given alpha. Where W denotes the current weights maintained by the algorithm, and Z is the learning rate for the step of the inner optimization. The idea is to approximate W star alpha by adapting W using only a single training step without solving the inner optimization completely by training until convergence. Okay, so we're not going to train until we converge, but just take one step. Okay. This saves a lot of time. Related techniques have been used in meta learning for model transfer, gradient-based hyperparameter tuning, and unrolled generative adversarial networks. Note the equation six will reduce to this will reduce to um, the gradient of W alpha if W is already a local optimum for the inner optimization. This is zero, I guess. This this part becomes zero. Um, if it's at a local optimum uh, for the inner optimization, and thus, yeah. So this this gradient of um, the training loss is zero. The iterative procedure is outlined in algorithm one. Okay, so let's look at algorithm one. Algorithm one darts differentiable architecture search. So we, oops, we first create a mixed operation O bar ij parameters by parameterized by alpha ij for each edge I, ij, okay. While not converge, do update the architecture alpha by descending um, on the gradient of the validation loss. Um, Z is zero if using first order approximation. Okay, update weights W by descending 
the gradient of the training. Derive the final architecture based on learned alpha. So, so we descend both on the validation and the train at the same time in this algorithm. So it saves a lot of time instead of descending, descending in the uh, weights and then going back and descending on the architecture and then again descending on the weights, we just go one time. Okay. And the iterative procedure is outlined in algorithm one. While we are not currently aware of the convergence guarantees, guarantee for our optimization algorithm, in practice it is able to reach a fixed point with a suitable choice of Z. We also note that when momentum is enabled for weight optimization, the one-step unrolled learning objective in equation 6 is modified accordingly, and all of our analysis still applies. Okay. Applying a chain rule to the approximate architecture gradient yields um, the gradient of, okay, uh, on 6. So chain rule here. Uh, gradient of W prime um, alpha minus C second second order gradient of the training um, gradient of W prime on the validation where W prime equals W minus C the gradient of the training with W and alpha denotes the weights for one step forward model. The expression above also contains an expensive matrix vector product in its second term. Fortunately, the complexity can be substantially reduced using the final differences, difference approximation. Let epsilon be a small scalar and w plus minus equals uh, uh, w plus minus epsilon gradient of the validation. And so this is approximated the second gradient, uh, second order gradient of the L train W alpha times the gradient of W prime L valid of the validation loss. Validation loss is approximately equal to the gradient of the of the training. Because that's that's what we use the chain rule for. Okay. Evaluating the finite differences requires only two forward passes for the weights and two backward passes for alpha, and the complexity is reduced from O size of alpha omega to just the order alpha plus um, alpha plus w. Okay. First order approximation. When c z is zero the second order derivative in equation 7 will disappear. In this case, the architecture gradient is given by the gradient of L val W alpha, corresponding to a simple heuristic of optimization, optimizing the validation loss by assuming the current W is the same as W star alpha, so the weight doesn't change. This leads to some speed up but empirically worse performance according to our experimental results in table 1 and table 2. Table 1. Um, table 1 and table 2 uh, double star best architecture among 24 samples um, okay we'll get to it and um, table 2 so here's the first order and the second order so okay and table 1 First order, test error, second order. So second order has better, better results. In the following, we refer to the case of z equals zero as first order approximation, and refer to the gradient formulation with z greater than zero as the second order approximation. 2.4, deriving discrete architectures. To form each node in the discrete architecture, we retain the top k strongest operations from distinct nodes among all non-zero candidate operations collected from all previous nodes. The strength of an operation is defined as the um, exponential of the alpha ij. So this is just the softmax equation um, of the sum of all the exponentials of the values um, over a particular O. To make our derived 
architecture comparable with with those in the existing works we use k equals 2 for convolutional nets and k equals 1 for recurrent cells the zero operations are excluded in the ab above for two reasons first we need exactly k non-zero incoming edges per node for fair comparison with existing models second the strength of the zero operation is underdetermined as increasing the logits of zero operation only affects the scale of the resulting node representations it does not affect the final classification outcome due to the presence of batch normalization. Okay, and let's look at figure two. Learning dynamics of our iterative algorithm where the validation loss of W alpha equals alpha W minus two alpha plus one and um, loss of the train W alpha equals W squared minus two alpha W plus alpha squared starting from alpha 0 w 0 equals negative to 2 okay that's the starting point the analytical solutions for the corresponding bi-level optimization problem is alpha star w star equals 1 1 which is highlighted in the red circle the dashed red lines indicates the f feasible set where constraint equation 4 is satisfied exactly namely Weights in W are optimal for the given architecture alpha. The example shows that a suitable choice of C helps to converge to a better local optimum. Okay, so for different values of C, it goes to the optimum much better. Three experiments and results. Our experiments on CIFAR-10 and PTB consist of two stages, Architecture Search, Section 3.1, and Architecture Evaluation, Section 3.2. In the first stage, we search for all the cell architectures using DARTs and determine the best cells based on their validation performance. In the second stage, we use these cells to construct larger, larger architectures, which we train from scratch and report their performance on the test set. We also investigate the transferability of the best cells learned on CIFAR-10 and PTB by evaluating them on ImageNet and Wikitex2, respectively. Okay, architectural search. Searching for convolutional cells on CIFAR-10. We include the following operations in O, 3x3 and 5x5 separable con convolutions, 3x3 and 5x5 dilated separable convolutions, 3x3 three three max pooling, 3x3 three three average pooling, identity, and zero. All operations are of stride one if applicable, and the convoluted feature maps are padded to preserve the spatial resolution. We use the ReLU con BN order for convolutional op operations, and each separable convolution is always applied twice. Our convolutional cells consist of n equals 7 nodes among which the output node is defined as the depth-wise concatenation of all the intermediate nodes, input nodes excluded. The rest of the setup follows Zoff et al. 2018 and so on, where a network is then formed by stacking multiple cells together. The first and second nodes of cell K are equal to the output of cell K-1, K-2 and cell K-1 respectively, and one by one convolutions are inserted as necessary. Cells located at the one-third and two-thirds of the total depth of the network are reduction cells, in which all the operations adjacent to the input nodes are of stride 2. The ar architecture encoding therefore is alpha normal, alpha reduce, where alpha normal is shared by all the normal cells and alpha reduce is shared by all the reduction cells. Detailed experimental setup of this section can be found on section A. 1.1. So that's the appendix. CIFAR 10. Since the architecture will be varying throughout the search process, we always use batch specific statistics for batch normalization rather than global moving average. Learnable affine parameters in all batch normalizations are disabled during the search process to avoid risking the outputs of the candidate operations. To carry out the architecture search, we hold half of the CIFAR-10 training data as the validation set. A small network of eight cells is trained using DARTs for 50 epochs, 
batch size of 64, both, both training and validation sets on the initial number of channels, 16. The number were chosen to ensure the network can fit into a single GPU. We use momentum SGD to optimize the weights W with the initial learning rate and W0.025 and yield down to zero following a cosine schedule without restart. Momentum 0 0.9 and a weight decay of three to the 10 to the mod minus four. We use zero initialization for the architecture variables. The alpha is in both the normal and reduction cells, which implies equal amounts of attention after taking the softmax over all possible ops. At the early stage, this ensures weights in every candidate op to receive sufficient learning signal, more exploration. We use Adam as the optimizer for alpha with initial learning rate n alpha equals three to the negative minus four. Momentum equals, momentum beta equals 0 0.5, 0 0.999 and weight decay of 10 to the negative three. The search takes one day on a single GPU. Three point one two, searching for recurrent cells on Pentry Bank. Our set of available operations include linear transformations followed by TANH, ReLU, sigmoid activations, as well as the identity mappings in zero operation. The choice of these candidate operations follow this papers. These papers. Our current cell consists of n equals twelve nodes. The very first intermediate node is obtained by linearly transforming the two input nodes adding up the results and then passing through a tan h activation function as done in enas cell the rest of the cell is learned other settings are similar to enas where each operation is enhanced with a highway bypass and the cell output is defined as the average of all intermediate nodes as in enas we enable batch normalization in each node to prevent gradient explosion during architecture search and disable it during architecture evaluation. A recurrent network consists of only a single cell, that is, we do not assume any repetitive patterns within the recurrent architecture. Detailed experimental setup for this section can be found in A12. Okay, let's look at this, A12, PTV. For architecture search, both the embedding and the hidden sizes are set to 300. The linear transformation parameters across all incoming operations connected to the same node are shared. Their shapes are all 300 by 300, as the algorithm always has the option to focus on the predecessors and mask away the others. Trying the weights leads to memory savings and faster computation, allowing us to train the continuous architecture using a single GPU. Learnable affine parameters in batch normalizations are disabled as we did for convolutional cells. The network is then trained for 50 epochs using SGD without momentum with learning rate and W equals 20, batch size 256, BPTT length 35, and weight DK 5 to the negative 7. We apply variational dropout of 0 0.2 to word embedding, 0 0.75 to cell input, and 0 0.25 to all the hidden nodes. A dropout of 0 0.75 is also applied to the output layer. Other training settings are identical to those in these papers. Similarly to the convolutional architectures, we use Atom for the optimization of alpha initialized zeros with initial learning rate and alpha equals two to the negative three. Momentum beta equals 0 0.9, 0 0.999, and weight decay of 10 to the negative three. The search takes six hours on a single GPU. Architect 3.2, architecture evaluation. Uh, before we do that, let's look at these figures. Figure 4, normal cell learned on CIFAR 10. Figure 5, reduction cell learned on CIFAR 10. And figure C, recurrent cell learned on PTB. Okay, and these are the max pooling, all these different, different types of um, cells learned. Okay, 3.2, architecture evaluation. To determine the architecture for the final evaluation, we run darts four times with different random seats and pick the best cell based on the validation performance obtained by training from scratch for a short period, 100 epochs on CIFAR 10 and 300 epochs on PTB. This is particularly important for recurrent cells as the optimization outcomes can be initialization sem sensitive. Figure 3. Figure 3 is here. 
Figure 3. Search progress on darts for convolutional cells on CIFAR 10 and recurrent cells on Pen Tree Bank. We keep track of the most recent architectures over time. Each architecture snapshot is retrained from scratch using the training set for 100 epochs on CIFAR 10 and for 300 epochs on PTB, and then evaluated on the validation set. For each task, we repeat the experiments four times with different random seeds and report the median and the best per run validation performance of architectures over time. As references, we also report the results under the same evaluation setup with comparable number of parameters of the best existing cells discovered using RL or evolution, including NASNet, a amoeba n, enas. Okay, so GPU hours, validation error. So darts, um, Okay, so it goes down pretty fast. So with GPU hours, best valid error so far. And with darts. And here also with the GPU hours. And uh, valid perplexity. GPU hours, best valid perplexity so far. So seems to be better than um, the other amoeba, amoeba net, and nas net. Okay. To evaluate the selected architecture, we randomly initialize its weights. Waste, weights learned during the search process are discarded, train it again from scratch, and report its performance on the test set. We note that test set is never used for architecture search or architecture selection. Detail experimental setup for the architecture evaluation on CIFAR 10 and PTB can be found in section A21 and section A22 respectively. Okay, let's look at A21. A large network of 20 cells is trained for 600 epochs with batch size 96. The initial number of channels is increased from 16 to 36 to ensure our model size is compatible with other baselines in the literature around 3 million. Other hyperparameters remain the same as the ones used for architecture search. Following existing works, additional enhancements include cutout, pass dropout of probability 0.2, and auxiliary towers with weight 0.4. The training takes 1.5 days on a single GPU with our implementation in PyTorch. Since the FAR results are subject to high variance even with exactly the same setup, we report the mean and standard deviation of 10 independent runs for the full model. To avoid discrepancy between different implementations or training settings, example, the batch sizes, we in incorporated NASNet A cell and the Amoeba Net A cell into our training framework and reported the results under the same settings as our cells. And so A22. Uh, a single layer recurrent network with the discovered cell is trained until convergence with batch size 64 using average SC, SGD with learning rate NW equals 20 and weight DK 8 to the uh, 8 into 10 to the minus 7. To speed up, we start with SGD and trigger ASGD using the same protocol as in this paper. Both the embeddings and their hidden sizes are set to 850 to ensure that our model size is comparable with other baselines. The token-wise dropout on the embedding layer is set to 0.1. Other hyperparameters remain exactly the same as those for architecture search. For fair comparison, we do not find we do not fine-tune our model at the end of the optimization, nor do we use any additional enhancements such as dynamic evaluation or continuous cache. The training takes three days on a single 1080 Ti GPU with our PyTorch implementation. To account for implementation discrepancies, we also incorporate the ENAS cell into our code base and train the network under the same setup as our discovered cells. Okay, um, can be found here. Besides CIFAR 10 and PTB, we further investigate the transferability of our best convolutional cell searched on CIFAR 10 and recurrent cell searched on PTB by evaluating them on ImageNet, mobile setting, and Wikitext 2, respectively. More details of the train. Train, uh, transfer learning experiments can be found in section A23 and A24. Okay, let's take a quick look. We consider the mobile setting where the input size is 224 
by 224 and the number of multiply add operations in the model is restricted to be less than 600 million. A network of 14 cells is trained for 250 epochs with a batch size 128. We decay 3 times 10 to the minus 5. And initial SGD learning rate of 0 0.1 decayed by a factor of 0 0.97 after each epoch. Other hyperparameters follow these papers. The training takes 12 days on a single GPU. And Wikitext 2. So this is for ImageNet Wikitext 2. We use embedding and hidden sizes 700, weight decay 5, in, 5 times 10 to the negative 7, and hidden node variational dropout 0 0.15. Other hyperparameters remain the same as in our PTB experiments. Okay. Three point three results analysis. The CIFAR ten results for convolution architectures are presented in Table One. Table One comparisons with the state of the art image classifiers on CIFAR ten lower error rate is better. Note the search costs for darts do not include the selection cost, one GPU day, or the final evaluation cost by training the selected art architecture from scratch. One point five GPU days. So test error is close to uh, BMedNet and uh, ENAS except the search days on GPU is dramatically lower. Okay. Notably DARTS achieves achieved comparable results with the state of the art while using three orders of magnitude less computation resources. That is 1.5 or 4 GPU days versus 2,000 GPU days for NASNet and 3150 GPU days for AmoebaNet. Moreover, with slightly longer search times, DARTS outperformed ENAS by discovering cells with comparable error rates but less parameters. The longer search time is due to the fact that we have repeated the search process four times for cell selection. This practice is less important for convolutional cells, however, because the performance of discovered architecture does not strongly depend on initialization. Okay. Alternative optimization strategies. To better understand the necessity of bi-level optimization, we investigate a simplistic search strategy where alpha and w are jointly optimized over the union of the training and validation sets using coordinate descent. The resulting best convolutional cell out of four runs yielded 4.16 plus minus 0.16 test error using 3.1 million parameters, which is worse than random search. In the second experiment, we optimize alpha simultaneously with w without alteration using SGD. Again, over all data available, training plus validation. The resulting best cell yielded 3.56 plus minus 0.10% test error during using 3 million parameters. We hypothesized that these heuristics could cause alpha analogous to hyperparameters to overfit the training data, leading to poor generalization. Note that alpha is not directly optimized on the training set in darts. Table 2 presents the results of the recurrent architectures on PTB, where cells discovered by DARTS achieved the test, the test perplexity of 55.7. Okay, test 2, uh, table 2. Comparison with state-of-the-art language models on PTB, lower per perplexity is be better. Note the search cost for DARTS does not include the selection cost one day and the final ex evaluation cost by training the selected architecture from scratch. Um, three GPU days. Okay, so Dart search day is uh, small, and um, Enas have similar search GPU days, but it gets a better uh, perplexity test than Enas and LSTM. This is on par with the state-of-the-art model enhanced by a mixture of soft softmaxes and better than all the rest of the architectures that are either manually or automatically discovered. Note that our automatically searched cell outperforms the extensively tuned LSTM, demonstrating the importance of architecture search in addition to hyperparameter search. 
in terms of efficiency, the overall overall cost for runs in total is within one GPU day, which is comparable to ENAS and significantly faster than NAS. It is also interesting to note that the random search is competitive for both convolutional and recurrent models, which reflects the importance of search space design. Nevertheless, with comparable or less search costs, DARTS is able to significantly improve upon random search in both cases, 2.76 plus minus 0 0.9 versus 3.29 plus minus uh, 0.5 on CIFAR 10, 55.7 versus 59.4 on PTB. Results in Table 3 show that the cells learned on CIFAR 10 is indeed transferable to ImageNet, so this is the transfer learning. Um, CPU search days is just 4, and the test error is pretty good. Okay. Top one is 26.7, and it's 8.7. Um, yeah. Results in Table 3 show that the, uh, the cell zone in CIFAR 10 is indeed transferable to ImageNet. It is worth noticing that DARTS achieves competitive performance with the state-of-the-art RL method while using three orders of magnitude less computational computation resources, computation for finding, finding the uh, cells. Table 4 shows that the cells identified by DARTS transfers to WT2 better than ENAS, although the overall results are less strong than uh, presented in Table 2 for PTB. Table 4 shows, let's go to Table 4. Table 4, comparison with state-of-the-art language models on WT2. So DARTS has a perplexity of 71.2. Um, it's a little bit higher, but um, yeah, yeah, this is less use. Um, yeah, less strong than those presented in Table 2 for PTB. The weaker transferability between PTB and WT2 as compared um, to that between CIFAR 10 and ImageNet could be explained by the relatively small size of the source data, uh, data set for architecture search. The issue of transferability could potentially be circumvented by directly optimizing the architecture on the task of interest. For conclusion, we presented DART's simple yet efficient architecture search algorithm for both convolutional and recurrent networks. By searching in continuous space, DART is able to match or outperform the state-of-the-art non-differentiable architecture search methods on an image classification and language modeling task with remarkable efficiency improvements by several orders of magnitude. There, may, there are many interesting directions to improve DARTs further. For example, the current method may suffer from discrepancies between the continuous architecture encoding and the derived discrete architecture. This could be alleviated, example, by annealing the softmax temperature with a suitable schedule to enforce one hot selection. It would also be interesting to investigate performance-aware architecture derivation schemes based on the shared parameters learned during the search process. Okay, and there's references, 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 and experimental details. We already went to this. Okay, we have B, search with increased death. To better understand the effect of death for architecture search, we conducted architecture search on CIFAR 10 by increasing the number of cells in the stack from 8 to 20. Initial numbers of channels is reduced from 16 to 6 due to mon memory budget, budget on a single GPU. All these other hyperparameters remain the same. The search cost doubles and the resulting achieves 2.88 plus minus 0.9 test error, which is slightly worse than 2.76, obtained using a shallower network. This particular setup may have suffered from in large discrepancy of the number of channels between architecture search and final evaluation. Moreover, searching with deeper model might require different hyperparameters due to increased number of layers to back up through. Okay, interesting. <coughs> See complexity analysis. In this <coughs> See complexity analysis. In this section, we analyze the complexity of our search space for convolutional cells. Each of our discretized cells sh allows the product, k equals 1 to 4, k plus 1, k, okay, it's uh, times 7 to squared, it's 10 to the 9 possible decks without considering graph isomorphism. Recall that we have non, seven non-zero ops, two input nodes, four intermediate nodes, and two predecessors each. 
Since we are jointly learning both normal and reduction cells, the total number of architectures is approximately uh, 10 to the 18th. This is greater than 5 to the 6 times 10 to the 14 of PNAS, which learns only a single type of cell. Also note that we retain the top two predecessors per node only at the very end, and our continuous search space before this final discretization step is even larger. Specifically, each relaxed cell of fully connected graph contains 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 equals 14 learnable edges, allowing 7 plus 1 to the 14, which is 4 times 10 to the 12 possible configurations, plus 1 to include the 0 op indicating, uh, indicating a lack of connection. Again, since we are learning both normal and reduction cells, the total number of architectures covered by the continuous space before discretization is 4 times 10 to the 12 squared, 10 to the 25. Okay, so that's the end of the paper. Thank you for joining me for the paper reading. Hope that was useful.